Hi guys, I, I need to play this broadcast, this uh, two minute, 40 second video on what is taking place in Carpinteria, the fires, evacuated at 3 a.m. Interesting that even the Hurricane Harvey, so-called hurricane, the flooding. The Army Corps of Engineers released the reservoirs, I believe, at 2 a.m. And they did not inform the residents of their houses that would be flooded until, I think, 12 a.m., Northern California, fire starting at 10 p.m., evacuations at midnight. Southern California fires starting, what time? Like around 10 p.m. Evacuations are taking place when people are sleeping does that sound right to you? It doesn't sound right to me. The flames ripped through a neighborhood in Carpinteria Sunday morning, destroying more than 12 structures there, but sparing some of the others. KSBY News reporter Angel Russell is live with more on what she saw earlier today. Angel, tell us about that. Dan, it was a sad sight on Stanley Park Road. Most of the houses along that area were just completely turned to ashes, but even more surprising, right next to a lot of the destroyed houses, some of them were still standing tall. And even more surprising was that some had some produce and vegetables right along the areas where it burned, and those ones were not touched, but definitely a sad sight. And I also learned a little bit about how it went down. So a lot of the residents were told to evacuate Sunday just before 3 a.m. And that's when that fire was really moving fast. So sheriff's deputies were going door to door saying, you have to leave now. And they were exactly right. Shortly after 3 a.m., that's when the fire started creeping down to that valley and attacking the houses. But take a look at some residents who are just thankful that their house wasn't touched tonight. These stairs used to lead to a home on Stanley Road in Carpinteria. The fast-moving fire Sunday morning burned over the mountains and tore through this neighborhood, turning some houses into ash, but leaving others standing tall amongst the rubble. It looks like it got about as close as it could get without actually burning the home. Greg Stoney was one of the lucky ones. Flames engulfed the houses around him, but left his untouched. Feeling very fortunate, but really sorry for friends who weren't so fortunate. His 15 <laughs> chickens that were left behind during evacuations also survived the blaze. We didn't have anywhere to move them to, and they've got a pretty big yard without any vegetation, so we're just hoping for the best. Stoney is now putting out lingering flames around his home getting the house ready for when his family returns. It's, it definitely, you know, it's going to be like living in an ashtray. As the fire swept through this neighborhood, it really chose random targets. The house behind me destroyed, but yet something so delicate like an orange tree right in front of it survived just fine. <laughs> really? Really? And that reporter is not questioning how that home in the middle of all of these trees were left untouched, but that home literally got destroyed, burned to the ground. Like an orange tree right in front of it survived just fine. This is the camper and then that's our house right there. Jasmine Garcia came back to find structures destroyed on the property her family rents. We just saw that whole thing just burned off. Our house was like fortunate enough to like survive through this fire. One hundred and ninety-four structures that have been destroyed in this fire, and fire officials say tonight their main focus is really protecting houses, just like the one you see behind me along that ridge. Dan Karina. All right, thank you for that, Amy. All right, you know, I sure hope I sure hope that Americans wake up soon. I, you know, the fact that there it is, I mean, you see this home destroyed, 
How did that fire? Just move in. Destroy that home. And on either side, these orange trees completely untouched. The link is below.